Hey guys, this is Super Review Show from the episode of Rock Talk. This is the show where I break down albums that have anniversaries or the albums just that good. You should definitely check out this album no matter what. And here we are today, June 2nd, 2023, talking about Bruce Springsteen's 45th anniversary of Darkness on the Edge of Town. This album, from start to finish, is a masterpiece, needless to say. Look at that guy. Look at that cover right there. Such a stud. Um, this has some of the best songs of his career, in my humble opinion, because it was coming off of the heels of Born to Run. Born to Run, obviously, is in my top probably two or three favorite albums of all time, and Born to Run, the title track, is my favorite song of all time, so you can see how much of a Springsteen fan I am. This album, though, had, didn't really have many hits on it. It kind of just had, like, a lot of really solid songs that are still part of his set today. You go see him live now in 2023. And there are some of the some of these songs are still being played live in his set today, such as Badlands, of course, f- incredible album opener. Uh, Adam raised the cane, something in the night, Candy's room, and racing in the street. That's in the side one. Racing in the street is probably his best car song. I mean, I love Pink Cadillac, but that's a great song. Racing in the street, check it out. Uh, the Promised Land opens up side two. Promised Land. It's not the Chuck Berry one. It's his own version. Uh, Factory, Streets of Fire, Prove It All Night, and Darkness. The t- I'm a title track sucker. If you watch our show, Career Retrospectives, you know I'm a title track sucker. But the title track, Darkness on the Edge of Town, is fantastic. Um, I've heard a lot of this. I've heard a couple of these songs live over the course of the years. Uh, I've, I've, only, I've only seen Bruce twice. I've seen him in 2016. He played three songs off this record. He played Badlands. Uh, something in the night and uh, the, the Promised Land. When I just saw him in 2023 recently, uh, I I heard him play uh, Badlands, The Promised Land, and uh, Prove It All Night. So a little bit of a different stretch there. Um, there, you have to understand too, like Born Turn was a massive album, but this was the follow up, and it doesn't really get looked on by rock members of the rock community. Or whatever it doesn't really get looked on as a, a, a big enough follow-up, in my opinion. Um, the Springsteen fan community loves this record. They love some Darkness, darkness, darkness on the Edge of Town. E Street Radio clearly plays nothing but Darkness, darkness on the Edge of Town uh, stuff off it, which I, I don't mind. I, I, I love E Street Radio to death. It's just that some of the songs on that Sirius XM channel can be overplayed a little bit, in my opinion. Like, I'm not going to list off any specifically, but Darkness gets played a lot on there. Um, and I feel like you could, they could play more like The Rising or Magic, whatever. That's just me. Um, but this is a fantastic record. Um, what A lot of the songs on this record have made up the bulk of his set for the past 50 years. Uh, or 45 years since the album came out. Like, the song Darkness on the Edge of Town, Badlands and Promised Land have made up most of his set for the past like 45 years too. Uh, Streets of Fire doesn't get much love. Factory doesn't get much love. Candy's Room is obviously a big one. Adam Raised the Cane, not so much. Something in the Night's a really good track, though. Um, but, like, he wanted to make an album that was very... Coming off of the heels of Born to Run. He wanted to make an album that sounded a little bit more heavier. Not like Metallica, not like heavy metal, but harder for him. Harder, like, harder songs for Bruce, mainly. Um, Badlands did a testament of that. Uh, the Promised Land, uh, Streets of Fire, Adam Ray. You know, these are hard hitting, hard rock songs, and a lot of the the rock community, I feel like, feel like they overlook this record quite a bit. Um, not everyone does. Not all. All music is subjective. All art is subjective. I'll, I'll always say that, and I'll always tell you the truth. That's how it is. Um, but you have to accept greatness when it shows up, and this is great. This is a great record. Um, it's it's just so like the two the the slow the one song that stands out to me a lot on this track on this record actually is the racing in the street racing in the street um is a is a car song that he wrote uh, about it, like and just I'm not gonna go into the lyrics because I don't, don't want to copyright anything but uh, it's a fantastic song it's 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 just a piano and. It's a piano-driven song, but the rest of the album is guitar-driven for the most part. And you could definitely see where he was going. And I've heard stories. Obviously, I'm, I'm 24. I'm almost 25. I was not alive in the 70s. 
But to my understanding was when, and I've listened to record, I've listened to Bruce talk about this album. I've listened to fans talk about this album. I've listened to Dave Marsh on East Tree Radio talk about this album. He said, Bruce said, when they started to play the material live, something changed pretty quickly for them because the songs on record sound different when they go live. And that's not just the case for most artists. It's different. Like some songs you're, you're meant to hear live. Like a lot of Bruce's songs are meant to be heard live. Uh, but this one especially is like songs like Darkness, Darkness Under the Town, you know, uh, Badlands, you know, Something in the Night. These are songs that are meant to be performed. The, the studio cuts are great. But the live performance on the Darkness tour in the 78, 79, different vibe completely. Very different. Very different. Um, in a good way, though. It made them a very powerful live act presence. Um, in my opinion, the best live act of all time. And I mean, I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Like Some people say, like, you know, Kendrick Lamar. Some people will say, you know, a current artist or here and there. Or Justin Bieber or whatever. But, like, honestly... When you think about when you say when you say the words "what's the best act of all time," typically I like to say "all time" means encompassing the best 30, 40, 50. longevity is a factor, relevancy is a factor, and sorry, but Justin Bieber has only been around for about fifteen years, maybe twelve years. Sorry, this record and the material on it, and Bruce as a band and the E Street Band have been around for over 50 years. It's hard to argue with when something's that incredible live. I've seen Bruce twice, and I've, and I've gone on my tangents part. I'm not going to go into it now, but like Bruce, to me, has the energy of God. He has so much energy on stage. I just saw him back in April. And by God, the man has so much energy. He's, 70, he's almost 74 years old, and he's still like moving and grooving and it's insane. If you have not, if you have a chance to see him this year, go see him while you can. I, 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 you may, you might hate him and his music or whatever, but his live performance will transform you. I'm not kidding, and I'm not just saying that as a fan of his. I'm just saying this as a person. Like, I want to take some people that that I know and say, hey, come here, Badlands Live, The Promised Land Live, Darkness Dungeons on the Edge of Town Live. Come hear him live because his songs live sound different. Than they do on record. It's the truth. He's one of those rare artists where that's the case. Like Elton John's the case for that. Obviously, when he's retiring, uh, Billy Joel is the case for that with some of his songs. Uh, not many artists have that trait to them, in my opinion. Like Green Day, as great as Green Day was live and on, on the Hell of Mega Tour, they did not deliver an equivalent performance to me personally as. Bruce Springsteen or Elton John or Billy Joel. And I'm not just saying that because I, I love Green Day to death, but I, for whatever reason, the performance was not on par with the energy and the song coming off of the stage. The energy. I got that with the Foo Fighters. I got that with Red Hot Chili Peppers. I did not get it with Green Day. I didn't get it with, like, I just saw Blink-182. I didn't really get it. I didn't really get it with Blink, you know? But some bands have, some acts have that energy. And I love it when they have that like once in a lifetime experience. Like I, it's, it's not just like oh, there I'm seeing them on tour. It's I saw this person live, and the songs on this record made him. The songs on Darkness on the Edge of Town made him even more of a powerful presence on stage because of the song quality, the way that the saxophone solo was put out, the piano pieces, the way that the songs came together. This t- the songs, and I'm gonna have some tension. The songs on this record are fantastic live. I would kill to hear this album live from start to finish. But Bruce, I mean, he's not going to do that now. But um, but yeah, so what can you say, though? What can you say? 45 years later, here we are still talking about Darkness on the Edge of Town. Fantastic record. Uh, for lack of a better word, just a phenomenal album overall. Um, but yeah, so the happy 45th anniversary to Darkness on the Edge of Town. What do you guys think out there? Are you a Bruce Springsteen fan out there? Are you a fan of this album? Are you a fan of the songs? Are, are there some songs you don't really like on this record? Whatever you're thinking about, jump down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts out there. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the button for notifications. Thanks so much for watching. For all of your episodes of Rock Talk, keep it locked on the Super Rush of the J-Man. It's off the rock. We'll see you guys later.